Hello everybody, JT Bear here. I'm just going to make some quick changes to the uh, No Power Aquaponic Garden, which will probably be referred to as the NPAG from now on because it's a lot to type in a title. Um, it's kind of ironic how things go full circle in my yard. What's happening today is the strawberries are actually going back to where they came from, more or less. If you uh, check in my previous videos, I'll put a link here-ish, um, you can see a video called, uh, I think it's from primitive to proper, where I moved my aquaponics out of, basically, a no power aquaponic setup, into a standard aquaponic garden, because I, you know, I thought it would be better. I decided to take them out of that in the long run, because, you know, strawberries, it's, they take up a lot of real estate for very little production. So, yeah, now that they're back in the no power aquaponic garden, and I'm running another no power aquaponic garden, I'm going to put those into something more like a grow bed, but I thought I would show you guys what I'm doing so you know you're not really limited to coffee cans. So you can see a lot of these plants really do seem to be enjoying this setup. And it's not like the strawberries aren't enjoying the setup, but because their leaves are so broad, it can get a little difficult to, uh, to water them because I'm using just that little juice jug, right? So it's not exactly the most accurate pour spout. This should solve that little problem. So here I have a 38 liter storage tote. I guess that works out to just under 10 gallons or so. And I'm gonna turn that into the strawberry grow bed for the no power aquaponics system. As always, I'm gonna keep this super simple. Check out just how easy this is gonna be. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing a drill bit that is just slightly smaller than the airline tubing that I'm using just to ensure a nice snug fit in there and then I'm gonna pop a couple holes in there now where I put these holes in here doesn't really matter except for the farther up it is the more water is going to be left in here in between waterings to allow the plants to uh, well stay hydrated if I should forget to water it so I'm gonna go with about there it looks good now I've only put two drain holes in here for a very good reason, and I'll explain that back in the greenhouse. So now that we're back in the greenhouse, I'm just going to grab a couple of these drain lines, because they won't be needed in the Folgers cans. That was a good long drain. And there's one back here I can use. That's also in a strawberry. And we're just going to force these into that hole. So there you can see the collection of strawberry plants that I'm going to be putting in. I've done a little juggling and rearranging. More of that to come because I still want to take that pepper inside, I think. I'm going to prune it up and figure something else for it. But anyway, that's not this video. Now I need to salvage some material to fill my bin with and uh, we'll take it from there. I guess I'll start by raiding the uh, strawberry planters themselves. Looks like that should be a good start, but not going to fill it by any means. Be nice and full of strawberries though. Alright, well I'm going to have to rummage around and find a whole lot more bedding material to fill that with. At least to the middle line. But it will do for now. Give the strawberries more room to send out their runners. And, you know, it's a singular thing to fill. So now for the fill I can just find any random spot in the middle there. And top it up from the fish tank. Because I only put the two drain holes in there, this is going to take quite a long time to drain. And the way I see it, that's a good thing. What that's going to mean is that it's going to be a longer drip into the reservoir below, and it's going to be a longer drip into the sump tank below, creating ultimately more water movement and giving the fish a little bit more oxygenation and the opportunity for the water chemistry to balance itself out naturally. So I could have put a lot more drain holes in that but I didn't and I'm not gonna. Alright, ideally I do think this should be set up with a sump tank and I'll get to that sooner or later. But then again I also think it should be set up with a water tower over here that feeds everything down there. But uh, I'll get the whiteboard out and explain all that. Anywho, there you go everybody. This is another quick look at another change in my no power aquaponic garden. 
Thanks for coming along and have yourselves a fantastic day.